What's up everyone, it's Izzo. Welcome to the lab and welcome to Devlog 16. First off, I just wanna say, sorry for the wait and the sudden disappearance. I promise the lab is still kicking. I had some personal events to tend to and also I've been doing a lot of grinding and prep off screen, but we're back for another Devlog. So, as we all know, Codename All Night is the first game I tried to enter the indie game industry with. Yikes, that logo really needs to be redone. Oh yep, that's a lot better. Anyways, my first attempt in the indie game industry was a failure. Yeah, I won't lie to you guys, I made a lot of mistakes with Codename All Night. But those mistakes turned into lessons and took me in a direction where I started working on my super secret project. Now, it's time to share that project with everyone. Little backstory, this devlog was originally a lot longer, but I decided to cut it into two videos. The two parts were just too different. The first part was about the mistakes I made with my first game, Codename All Night, while the second part was really just the announcement to my super secret project. Honestly, the announcement just doesn't deserve to be behind another topic. So, backstory aside, today it's time to announce my super secret project. Next devlog will be about the mistakes and lessons with Codename All Night. I'll also be dropping some advice and guidance in that one as well. So all my fellow indie developers and creators, look out for that video for sure. Anyways, let's get into it. I'm super excited to share this with everyone and I hope you enjoy the unveiling. Personally, I can't believe we're here, but without further ado, I want to introduce everyone to Galaxy Frontier. It's time to face endless waves of enemies in an effort to make the galaxy safer. All right, before we tour the galaxy, let's talk rollout. PC is the first target, which is coming soon. Then we got the Android port coming after that. To round things out, we got the iOS port coming last. Somewhere in there, I'll hopefully roll out the Mac port as well. I sound a little less confident about the Apple ports because, well, it's difficult. All my tries to port to Mac end in failure to run the game or to even render it. But not to worry, I will find a way around it. One more thing, this game is meant to be live, or whatever they call it when you have updates planned after release. There's a lot of ideas I didn't get to put in or play with because of, well, scope creep. Let's just say development of this game has been super clean, at least compared to Codename All Night. But that doesn't mean I haven't found a way around basically how to get out a game and then also keep adding stuff. So even after release, expect some updates and projects in the lab that have to do with Galaxy Frontier. Naturally, that means that you guys get early looks at a lot of new features and updates for Galaxy Frontier. So, without further ado, let's get on to the tour of the galaxy. Now, on to the tour of the galaxy. Let's start with the mazes. You might ask, how can you have a maze runner in space? Well, with asteroids, of course. There are asteroids spread throughout a level. They create walls and obstacles. Little pointer, do not hit or get hit by the asteroids. They will hurt. A saying I have with the game is to, well, drive responsibly, folks. Speaking of levels, Galaxy Frontier has six worlds to explore and basically conquer. Well, let's say defend and keep safe. Each of these worlds are pre-made with asteroids or walls of asteroids spread throughout a level. They start off sparse at first and get more common as you progress through each world. Each world has an infinite amount of levels in it. Here's where those arcade features come in at. A possible goal or way to play is to see how many levels you can clear within a world. Each level has three waves. Of course, this is an opportunity for competition. Grab that high score on each world on your machine and on your friends. Two player on the same computer or mobile device will also be possible on release. I have a lot more plans for multiplayer in the future, but I wanted to keep it simple for the release. As you can probably guess, adding in multiplayer at this phase would have put a lot more time on development, which for me at this moment is a big no-no. Let's talk about progression. There is two modes of play, arcade and story mode. Story mode is how you can progress and upgrade your ships. Really, there's not much lore within the game. That could change though. I'm just gonna be real. I do have inspiration for a storyline, but I'm unsure about adding it in. As a matter of fact, let me know in the comments if that's something you wanna see. Anyways, story mode is really a way to allow ship progression and world unlocking without interfering with the arcade aspect of the game. You start off with the Model 1 ship, also known as the Cruiser, with two health bars. Your ship can level up as you progress through wave after wave of enemies. Eventually, your ship can look something like this. Or it can look like this too. At this time, there's only two ships in the game. You have to buy the second ship from the dealership. Let's get back to the worlds for a second. What would a maze be without goodies hidden throughout the world? Well, let's not find out here. Each world holds a collectible that you can find. Certain ones are required to progress through the game, others are optional. Usually the collectibles will be enclosed within a wall of asteroids. That's where a level 10 ship comes in handy at. At level 10, you can unlock a variant to the primary weapon called the Asteroid Buster. Use this to get those collectibles and also to remove any asteroids that might be in your way. Alright, it's time to talk about power-ups. There are two different types technically. 
There are ones that are stationary, basically they don't move, they don't fall, they're usually blue and are around asteroids and coins. Then you have enemy drops, they are usually red. The blue ones only apply to either health, energy and shields and will replenish them to their max. Enemy drops can range from the red ones, they will give you 1 point of health, 1 point of shields or 25% of your maximum energy. Little side note, I had a lot of trouble getting that 25% to work right. Anyways, then we have blue enemy drops. These ones are a little different. I'm not going to go over all of them, but the main ones I want to mention are the ones that alter the way the primary weapon fires. Double and triple laser do exactly as they say. Either you shoot two or three lasers at the same time. It's really fun and it really gets rid of the enemies fast. On the other hand, we have a more permanent power up called energy weapons. As the name states, these weapons when fired take energy. Energy becomes more important in the later part of the game. A lot of secondary functions use energy. Asteroid Buster uses it and the Hyperdrive uses energy as well. The third thing that uses it are these energy weapons, as the name states. These are special collectibles hidden within the level. They're gold discs that only come out after a certain amount of levels have been reached. I won't give the exact numbers here though. By the way, those gold discs are actually an easter egg for the actual gold disc floating through space as we speak. To be picked up by some aliens, basically it introduces us as the human race. No, this isn't a joke or some conspiracy theory. See? Look. Anyways, let's see what's up with the first type of energy weapon, called the phase laser. As its name suggests, this laser goes through a ship and it can hit another. It has another feature though. If it hits the top of the screen, it bounces back off and reverses direction. Same thing happens when it hits the bottom of the screen. Alright, so now we got about like two ships and about three energy weapons. So a good question at this point would really be, how do you switch or access those ships and those other energy weapons? That's a good question. Very good question. Just like the movie and the abduction stories, there's a mothership, the difference being it's your mothership. Once unlocked, this guy will follow you world to world and store your unused energy weapons and ships. You can interact with it to change your energy weapon. It also allows the switching of ships. Be careful though, later worlds require certain upgrades to the ship. You won't be able to switch ships if it's incompatible with the world. Man, it's a lot of the word ship that I'm using today. Money. Why the coins you might ask? Well first off, it's used to buy the second model ship. Second, there's a store ship that can be unlocked. This ship allows for the purchase of health, energy, and shield recharges. It also allows for the upgrade of your energy weapons. So you might want to get out there and get these coins. These upgrades only make the energy weapons better. Shields in your hyperdrive can also be upgraded there. The last function is to exchange asteroid chunks for money. When asteroids are destroyed, they break into three chunks. You don't have to avoid them. Matter of fact, do the opposite and collect them. The store ship will pay you for them. Well, here it is everyone, my super secret project, Galaxy Frontier. Compared to Codename All Night's concept of a 2D survival game, this is a much more simple concept to develop and bring to life. That was a huge takeaway from my first time developing with Codename All Night. But I'll save that backstory for the next devlog where we actually talk about how and why Codename All Night inspired and structured the development of Galaxy Frontier. Anyways, we're finally here. Soon, the lab will be in full swing. I'm talking one game that you can play and also follow along with its development. I'm talking about Galaxy Frontier. Then we have Codename All Night, the first baby of Savage. Of course, we're still going to be developing that right here in the lab. Plus, a lot more learning and side quests. Just in case you didn't know, I love me some side quests. I'm no master of game design in any of its components, but we're going to continue this journey of learning and mastery together. As far as Galaxy Frontier's release date is concerned, that will be announced soon. I got some bugs and one more thing to add in, plus I have a couple of dev vlogs planned. But somewhere in between that, you can expect the release date to be announced. I'll keep everyone updated in the meantime, either here with some dev vlogs or on Instagram, which I'll leave below in the description. Alright everyone, leave a like if you enjoyed the time in the lab today, let me know what you think in the comments, and subscribe for future projects and experiments in the lab. Have a good one everyone.